and we'll actually kick this off with uh, David Maltz. So David has been uh, a mainstay of the SDN community for a long time. Uh, David works at Microsoft. Microsoft has always fascinated me from a networking point of view because of their diversity. I mean, there's no other company you know, that, that has that many different networks for different purposes in one place. If you think about it, at Microsoft, you have a large internal development team, you have Xbox, you have Search, you have e-commerce, um, you have um, uh, hosting uh, uh, with Azure. You know, very different requirements that require an incredibly powerful structure behind it uh, to power them. So without further ado, David. Hi, thank you. So I'll be talking today about the network function virtualization and software-defined network technologies that underlie all of Microsoft's uh, online services, both our first and our third party. And I'll be talking about work by the entire Azure networking team that's responsible for putting these together. So in Microsoft, network function virtualization, we've been doing it for a long time. We had to, because it's the only kind of technology that can work at cloud scale. Basically, we found that the data plane and the control plane of any kind of hardware-based infrastructure simply won't work at the scale the cloud has to operate at. Let me give you some examples. So for example, software load balancing. There's no way that hardware load balancing can scale up cost effectively or with the uh, time required to hit the many tens of terabits of load balancing capacity that we need to operate the public and private clouds that run Microsoft services. When you look at virtual networks that connect our tenants together, we do tens of millions of move ad change operations on these VNets every day. There's no way that hardware-based switches with a physical VLAN could ever keep up with that. If you go to ExpressRoute, technology that allows direct connectivity between a customer's on-premises location and the Azure cloud, each of our customers wants to push tens of thousands of routes towards their uh, in-cloud infrastructure. There's just no way to do that if we're trying to use routing tables that belong to physical routers. And the list goes on and on. If I talk about VPNs or other kinds of technologies, you have to do uh, NFV and SDN in order to operate at cloud scale. There have been some changes that we've seen, though. Customers are now demanding NFV not only for the infrastructure that Azure provides to every tenant, but they also want to bring their own NFV. There are a lot of great companies out there who are making products that can run in uh, cloud environments like Azure. But what we found is that Providing NFE in the cloud is a lot more than just building a VM that implements firewall software. You have to think a lot about what, how to manage these infrastructure and these, uh, the instances of these services, how to scale them out, how to make them monitorable and get good telemetry from them so we can run them as a robust service. And I'll talk about a couple of these things going forward. So I'd like to start by talking about the heart of our SDN stack, and that's Microsoft's virtual filtering platform. Inside of every VM switch, which is what connects the VMs and the physical host environments together on our servers, there is this VFP layer. Now, VFP is basically a programmable match action uh, infrastructure which implements all of our SDN primitives. That's address translation, SLB, software load balancing, it implements ACLs to implement, uh, for security and isolation. It implements metering for quality of service, all kinds of security guards to keep both our tenants safe and our own infrastructure safe. And we actually use the same technology in both our Azure public cloud as well as in the private clouds based on Microsoft technology. We found this to be tremendously useful because nothing battle tests a piece of software component like being in production in the cloud. And by keeping the heart the same in both deployments, we've been able to take that battle-tested software and actually now expand it to all of our customers. But one thing that we found is interoperability is still key. And so while people will use Azure APIs to program this uh, VFP when they're running in the Azure cloud infrastructure, in the on-premises environment, they want to use other APIs. So we also have to support things like VXLAN, OVSDB, OMI, and each of those are essentially then wrappers that can speak these protocols to external controllers, but then program the same uh, VFP heart under the covers. As I alluded to in the opening slide, performance is really critical in these environments. And so, for example, if you look at what goes into a VM switch, it sounds like a fairly simple thing to do, but hundreds of microseconds of latency can get added here if you're not very careful about how you write and then optimize this code. For example, to make this a very flexible programmable environment, you want to have 
um, all sorts of rules and actions that are actually quite complex, that are very general. The problem is that that's slow. And if you take every packet and put it through that path, you're gonna end up with a very high latency uh, on your data path. And so we've had to invest in things like basically building compilers that will take the first packet of a flow, run it through all of these match action tables, and essentially build the combined action that needs to be applied to each of the following packets that are part of that flow. So while the first packet has to go through the slow path, all of the subsequent packets, we can simply hash on the flow identifiers, figure out the combined action that needs to be applied, and apply it, essentially the output of all those individual rules in a single step. And that gets us down to a cheap path with very low latency. Had to do more than that as well. So the cost of a good sold in the cloud is driven by VM density. We want to be able to pack as many VMs onto each server as possible while still giving each VM an excellent uh, quality of service and an excellent uh, performance experience. And as the technology of servers continues to ramp up, that makes the job of the SDN infrastructure harder and harder. For example, 40 gigabit Ethernet is here. Um, you know, we started at one gig, then through 10 gig, and now all of our servers are deploying with 40 gig on it. The VM switch, the VFP, can't be the bottleneck, right? We can't let our infrastructure actually uh, introduce latency into this. And so what we found is that you have to leverage everything that the hardware in your entire server ecosystem can offer you. We use technologies like Packet Direct. This essentially is a software um, interaction with the NIC where you do direct polling of that NIC to avoid all the latency possible in the operating system, all the servicing of interrupt latency, and get down to as high a packet per second at lowest latency as possible. We found that a single core can process 20 million packets per second on a 40 gig NIC, and we've needed to leverage that again to keep up with the uh, speed of technology that goes forward. We see more and more hardware offloads going into the network interface cards. And so we've had to extend our, our VFP platform to actually introspect on the NIC, see what capabilities it has for offload, and then leverage all of them that it can to again accelerate each of those uh, action rules that it's trying to apply. Some of the NICs have QoS or queuing capabilities, some have encapsulation capabilities. We've had to leverage them all in a very flexible way. And there's a lot more coming as well in the forms of flexible hardware offloads. And Mark Rosinovich will be talking more about that in his keynote tomorrow. Moving forward, I also want to call out how important management, monitoring, and telemetry have turned out to be. They are essentially life for us in the online hosting space. We found that we really had to invest in frameworks to manage NFE instances, because there are going to be lots and lots of them. Again, it's not enough to just stand, take some function that you want, stick it in a VM, and try and use that as an NFE solution. You want to think ahead of time about all the management operations that you're going to have to do on all those NFE instances once you get them out there. And it's the things that you might not expect to be cause problems that actually are the hardest to implement. Disruption-free upgrade. You need to be able to turn over each of those NSV software bases without actually impacting your customer's traffic. That's, again, like changing out the engines on an airplane while it continues to fly. Cert rollovers. You have to be constantly upgrading certif security certificates and passwords in order to meet compliance requirements. Again, all without disrupting your user's traffic. And if you want to think about what makes this difficult, we'd like it to be the case that the same size team that builds one of these NFE features is then the same size team that can actually support that NFE instance and all the NFE instances on that feature for the life cycle of the product. And that forces us to do the automation early. But again, it's the only way to be scalable. Another thing we found is that when you have a single SDN policy implementation and enforcement point like the VFP that's being programmed by rules from many different types of controllers, the virtual network controller, the SLB controller, the ACLs and firewalls controllers, the rules that go into there end up being very complex. We had to invest a lot in tools to help our developers understand what was going on, debug problems, both uh, as new features are being developed, and also then when a live site incident occurs because something unexpected has happened. We found it to be very important to basically allow the taking emulated or synthetic packets, running them through a rule stack, and getting output of exactly which of these rules are going to match on that packet and what that rule is going to do to the packet. You can think about this as sort of like how important it was to put ACL hit counts on physical switches. This is sort of the NFV and SDN equivalent of that. We need to bring these monitoring technologies in order to have a robust platform. Another thing we found was very important is that good telemetry is essentially required, both to know that you have a healthy infrastructure and that the services running on top of your infrastructure are also healthy. 
You know, the VFP, the SDN layer, produces all sorts of counters that tell us about our infrastructure and also how healthy the services running on top of that are. So for example, here's just a little chart that's showing the megabytes per second going through a software load balancer. And also how many kilopackets per second are going through there and how many SINs per second that we're seeing. And so looking at this data, we can see, hmm, it looks like something interesting was happening on the service back at the beginning of the week. But by the end of the week, they had gotten things sorted out and we're seeing a nice diurnal cycle where all three graphs move together in tandem. This kind of information is critical. And again, it's not the kind of thing you might think that you have to build into your system from the first day, but it is critical to having implementation operability going forward. So thanks, and I look forward to your questions later. Thanks, Dave.